All right, Shalom, Makim. Shalom, Yasha'Allah. First off, I want to give all praises unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechak, Wadash. I want to give double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching us this truth to rule well. All right, this is the brother Izar. And I'm out here in Midland prophesying the downfall of America and of these Edomites, these Caucasian men. Prophesying the rise of Israel, which are you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. All right? So this stuff is repetitive, man. Very repetitive. All right? So I'm going to go into Isaiah chapter 47. I'm going to start off at verse 1. Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. All right? Through the spirit, through the scriptures, we know that that virgin daughter of, of Babylon, virgin daughter of the Chaldeans, is actually talking about America. All right? Because America was, was set up in... in by, by enslaving our people, the natives, you know, the Negroes, or the Latinos, so-called Latinos, you know, when in reality, man, you know, when you see the, the slave ships, everything started in the 1400s, man, all right? So that prophecy about Egypt, or fleeing out of Egypt after 400 years, you know, that, that already passed. But spiritually, it will happen again, not exactly 400 years, because that's already passed, you know? Because we don't know when the time is now, all right? We know who, who is gonna be in charge in those times. We know who's gonna be on top of the world, ruling over in oppression. We know who he is through the scriptures, all right? And just to, just to verify that, you know, always going back to, to basic scriptures, man, stuff that you, that you learn, you know? Go to uh, Second Ezra chapter six, and I'm gonna start off at verse six. And then I consider these things. Did I consider these things? So, Aki, let me read that again. Then did I consider these things, and they all were made through me alone. All right. So through Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, everything was made. Right. The power of Yahweh flowing through Yahweh Shai. That's how everything was made, man. All right. And through none other. By me also shall they be ended and by none other all right <coughs> so you have a lot of negroes a lot of latinos a lot of native native americans that want to believe in their own thing man they don't want to believe in in yahabashim yahushai you know a lot of our people don't want to believe in the 12 tribe sign um they don't want to believe in the names you know and like elder tahar said ultimately you know in order to be in this truth and to be with Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, you have to have faith. That's the main. That's the main thing, man. You have to have faith that what you're doing is is what you're supposed to be doing, man. All right. There ain't no if, buts, or or anything about it, man. All right. That that's exactly what you have to do. If you have to go out and preach the gospel, which is the good news, to Israel, let them know that they can be saved. All right. To, to uh, wake up the elect and, and to preach in the name of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, then that's what you have to do, man. All right? Granted, I know a lot of people Friday nights, they like to get together, they like to go out, they like to go do things, you know? But you have to really sit down and think about 
what's more important to you, all right? Like some of the brothers in Chicago, I believe, were talking about it. Really sit down and assess is, for me, is it worth losing out on, on, on family time, losing out on, on other things, on worldly things? Is it worth it? So, you know, especially for brothers coming in, is, is that worth it? You know, like, like that scripture states about the man that's uh, paraphrasing about building the house. You know, are you going to build a house with not enough tools? Are you going to run the race, you know, with not enough strength or, or legs? You know, because sooner or later, if you don't have enough legs, you know, strength, to run that race, you're gonna give out, man. You're gonna flop, you're gonna, fl you're gonna fall, all right? So for us, that's what we have to do, man. You know, we have to get up and we have to do what we have to do. You know, so everything was made through Yah Bashim Yah was shy, all right? And through nobody else, but through him alone will everything be ended. So there ain't gonna be no meteor crash, all right? There ain't gonna be no, uh, you know, alien invasion. There ain't gonna be no uh, us living for millions and millions of years and, you know, destroying the earth. There isn't gonna be any of that, man. All right, the earth abideth forever. All right, and it's in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh's time when he sees you fit or when he doesn't, all right? And that's when the, the elect are the only ones that are going to be saved, man. The elect, the 144,000 and the great multitude of people, all right? And those are, those are Israelites, man. That's to whom pertaineth the adoption, all right? So, continuing in verse 7, Then answered I and said, What shall be the parting asunder of the times? All right, when are the times going to split? When is it going to be our turn? All right. When are we going to be the ones in rulership? Tzalakia. When are we going to be the kings? All right. When is justice going to be established? When is peace going to be established? When is righteousness going to, going to thrive? All right. Because for a long time, we've been living in this wicked world, man. All right. For a long time, this wicked world has been oppressing our people. All right. You Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. That's why you'll hear time and time again, the body always saying, this place gotta go. All right, we're not saying that just because, you know, we live out on the streets or, or anything like that, or because we don't have really good jobs like everybody else. No, man. We are tired of the wickedness that's going on in this place, all right? These distractions. Everything that doesn't involve Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man. And that's what this world thrives on. If not involving Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Hiding the name of Yahweh. Hiding the name of Yahweh Shai. You know? Or, when shall be the end of the first? Alright, so through the Spirit, we know what these scriptures talk about. Even if verse 9 wasn't on there. We know what it's talking about going back to to Genesis um, when uh, Esau and Jacob were born because that's a prophetic uh, thing, man. It's lucky, Akim. It's, it's cold out here, man. And, you know, my throat be hurting. But uh, um, that, that's what it's really talking about. Uh, Esau and Jacob. All right? We're trying to know when the Edomites are going to go down, which is this current kingdom, queendom, really, Babylon. And we're trying to know when, you know, Jacob is going to rise, which is Israel. Kwam Yasha Allah, rise Israel. All right. Now, a lot of people have it misinterpreted. And whenever you say Israel, they're thinking of those, those so-called white Jewish people. Those are Jewish, man. What does Ish mean? Ish means kind of, sort of. So they're kind of or sort of Jews, you know? They're not actually the true Jews from the scriptures. Because the actual Jews from the scriptures are you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. You 
guys are Hebrew Israelites, all right? There's, there's no more, uh, I'm a Greek, uh, I'm a Jew, uh, I'm an American, I'm a Mexican. Not anymore, man. We're not in those times anymore, all right? We're in the times where our people are going to know who they are. And by our people, I mean the elect. The elect are going to know. The elect are going to wake up. The elect are going to do the work. Verse 8, and he said unto me, from Abraham unto Isaac. When Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. Alright, so Jacob was holding on to Esau. So that means Esau came out first, because he's the old the elder, the oldest. He came out first, and then came Jacob right after. Alright, so just like that is just how the kingdoms are going to be. You know, the youngest will be greater than the oldest. So the kingdom of heaven, which is New Jerusalem coming down, which is the elect, that kingdom will be much, much, much greater than this kingdom that we're in now. All right? Because you Edomites don't know how to rule. You don't know how to give breaks. You don't know how to be understanding of the scriptures you know because if you did you would be giving the land uh, the necessary rest you would be giving the people necessary rest but they don't care man all right they don't care about that type of stuff all they want is now do 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 you know and reason why also we know you know that uh through the spirit that you uh natives and you like so-called latinos are israelites you know but not all israel is israel but are israelites because what was one of the biggest myths that the so-called latinos had the fountain of youth and the golden city a city made out of pure gold, El Dorado, all right? Now, these things are spiritual, man. To Jake, Jake nowadays, he, he don't want to think about it spiritually, but really when you do, it's talking about the kingdom, all right? It's talking about the word. It's talking about Yahweh. It's talking about Yahweh Shai, all right? So these, these Caucasians, these heathen, they don't, they don't understand, man, that when the natives were talking about El Dorado, what they were talking about is the kingdom in Revelation. In Revelation, it talks about the kingdom being made of pure gold, man. And that's what Esau wants, but he wants it now because he knows that his rulership is now. All right? He knows he, don't, he doesn't have the spirit to, to make it to the kingdom of heaven. If he did, he would pollute it. All right, he would pollute the kingdom because that's how wicked this man is. All right, and, and as for the fountain of youth, that's this word, man. Keeping the, keeping the, the word of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, he tells you that he, <coughs> out of your belly would be living, uh, uh, living waters, a fountain of living water, man. And that's the fountain of youth. All right, but when these Caucasians, these conquistadors, came over here to the Americas to enslave our people, and the people talked about, oh yeah, the, the, the golden city. They were thinking about a physical city because that's what they all are about. A physical city made out of gold. That's what they want. That's what they thrive on. They want physically get water and drink it and be young forever. All right? Now this stuff is spiritual. Israel shall know it. It is spiritual. Because the ones that have that living water in Yahawashai, the ones that are in that blood of Yahawashai and, and seek him until the very end and he takes them, those are the ones that are going to be flowing living rivers of living water, man. All right? Those are the ones that are going to inherit El Dorado, which is that golden city, that beautiful city, that new city that is going to be be brought from Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right. For Esau is the end of the world. You see, 
Esau is the end of the world. And what do you see, man? Esau polluting everything. Everything is polluted. All right? Chemical waste in California. Nuclear waste in California. And then you have patches of fire, you know, uh, burning up over there in California in those places where the nuclear waste was at. So you know that Esau, being as wicked as he is, is polluting this whole entire earth, man. The earth is even tired of Esau. All right? It needs rest. But that time of rest will come soon, man. <coughs> because the time for labor is now. We have to labor for this truth. If we don't labor for this truth, then we can't make it into the city. All right? For Esau, which Esau was a Caucasian man that fled to the Caucasus Mountains. All right? That was his dwelling place, the Caucasus Mountains. Is the end of the world, all right, which we see now. The Greeks, the Romans, all right, the English, which became America. All right? So those are... Salakia, so those are rulerships that the Caucasians have set up, all right? That's why in the Renaissance period, well, they call it the Dark Ages. But in the Dark Ages, what happened? They said it's lost history, when in reality, the Dark Ages were ruled by dark-skinned people. Dark-skinned people were ruling in the Dark Ages. And then the Renaissance came, which is the rebirth, rebirth of what? The rebirth of the Caucasian man. All right. Just like it states in in the so in the apocrypha that the heathen opened up the the book of the law, which is the scriptures, and sought to paint their faces thereof. All right. So that's why you have this Edomite looking Messiah. You have this Edomite apostles. All right. You have all these Edomite looking faces, when in reality, like Job said in. Uh, you know what? Let me let me pull that one out real quick. Job nine and twenty four. This is Job chapter nine, verse twenty four. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked, and like we just read in Second Ezra, Esau is the end of the world. So who has? The world. Who was it given to? It's given to Esau. All right? The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. All right? You Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, you guys were stripped of your heritage. And it was covered by who? The so-called Caucasian man. All right? That's why, you, like I was mentioning, you have that Edomite-looking Messiah. You have Edomite-looking... Uh, uh, Apostles, everything, man. Everything was covered up. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. You see? The judges, how do you judge somebody? How do you judge somebody? How can you, how can you judge someone? Based off of what? Based off of certain laws, right? You can only judge if you have laws. What are these judges, so-called judges, have whenever you go to court? What do they judge you based off of? What law you broke, right? That's how you get a crime, and that's how you uh, get sentenced. How much time do you have to do for the crime that you did? All right? So let me jump to Romans. It's oh, lucky. Romans 9, verse 1. I say the truth, Mashiach. Now, Mashiach means Messiah. All right? It doesn't mean Christ. Christ does not mean Messiah. Because that, that word Christ was taken from Serapis Christos. All right? which Serapis Christos later became known as Zeus. So you have Zeus Christos, 
Who does that sound like? Jesus Christ. All right? That's a pagan god. His name is not Jesus. All right? It tells you in Acts 26 that he spoke in the Hebrew tongue. So his name was Hebrew. He was a Hebrew man. He was an Israelite. So his name means Yahweh is our savior. Yahweh saves me. Yashai, Yashai means saves. Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father. So Yahweh Shai would be the name of his only begotten son. Who is Yahweh Shai? He's the Messiah. All right, Yahweh Shai means Yahweh saves. Like I mentioned, Yashai means saves. Yahweh is a father. Yahweh Shai means Yahweh saves. It's simple, man. Simple. I lied not, my conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. All right, and that's how we should be, man. We should have sorrow in our hearts. All right, we should be sorrowful. We should be mourning. All right, that's what these garments represent, man. We're in a state of mourning. We're still in captivity, man. We still haven't been taken away by Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Mashiach for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. So yes, according to the flesh, you have to be an Israelite. All right? But we don't pay attention to the looks. We don't pay attention to that type of stuff. What we really care about is the spirit. Is your spirit right? All right? That's why you're not an outward Jew, but an inward Jew. That doesn't mean that anybody is adopted. It doesn't mean that everybody is adopted into being a follower of the Messiah. All right? It means that your spirit is testifying with the Holy Spirit that you're an Israelite. All right? That's why it says try the spirit by the spirit. That's how you try the spirit. So you're not an outward Jew in appearance. You don't look like we did back then. But you're an inward Jew. What's inside of you? The spirit. My kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites, you see? To whom pertaineth the adoption. So the adoption pertains to you, Negroes, Latinos, and Na uh, Native Americans. To whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the giving of the law. You see, that's who the law was given to. It was given to Israel. The covenant, the giving of the law, and the service of our power, and the promises. What are the, what are the promises, man? That Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is going to come back. That's the promise. Gather the elect. Gather the sheep. That's the promise. All right. So like, I say, like it says in Revel, uh, Romans 9, it's talking about the giving of the law was only given to Israel. All right? You Jakes, you Israelites, the law was given to you. Not for you to forbear it or do away with it. It was given to you to follow. All right? So if the law was given, <coughs> Salakia, if the law was given to the Israelites, let me go back to Job chapter 9 and verse 24. Let me read again. The earth is given unto the hand of the wicked. And we read that in 2 Ezra chapter 6, verse 9, that Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. Again, how are you become a judge? You have to have laws, right? Statutes commandments so who was the law given to israel so he covers the faces of the israelites if not where and who is he all right so esau is covering the faces of the judges and replacing his own all right he's wicked He's trying to make everything about him. 
All right, he's trying to make everything where it looks like he's the one, where it looks like he should be up there, where it looks like he's the most high. That's what Esau ultimately wants, for himself to be looked at as the most high. All right? Let me read verse 9. For in 2nd Ezra chapter 6, verse 9. For Esau is the beginning of the world, or the end of the world, Slakia. For Esau is the end of the world. Like we said, those Caucasian men that came from the Caucasus Mountains rejoiced over Israel being captive. Not just that, but then funded people to go capture the Israelites that fled to the west borders and the southern borders of Africa. Alright? So those same people that you think are the chosen ones that are up there in Israel, they don't like you, you guys. They don't like you, Jakes. They don't. They don't like them, man. But why is that? Because in their spirit, they know. They know who really has authority. They know who really has the spirit. They know who really Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai is dealing with. They know it. You know, just like earlier. I was coming over here, I was in, that, in the red light, right over there in town, and I was just minding my business. You know, there's plenty of cars around, and a car is driving by, and you can tell that that man that was uh, in the passenger side was bummed out. He was crazy. He looks right at my direction, sticks out his tongue all the way down to his chin, and he starts doing this with a crazy ass face, man. Now, why would he do that? Because subconsciously, those spirits are working inside him. Right? Those spirits, they know. They knew who Yahweh Shai was. They knew who he was, man. You know? But those type of revelations are given to you, man. Because you deny Yahweh Shai. All right? For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that follow it. All right? That's who you Israelites really are. You Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. You guys are the true Hebrew Israelites that the scriptures talk about, man. You know? But when we say these words, your spirit doesn't testify with the Holy Spirit. Because like I said earlier, not all Israel is Israel. All right? There's a lot of you Jakes out there that just want to buck up. You guys just want to say no. That's not the truth. Why do you have the truth? You know? You're too prideful. A lot of our people are, man. And that's just how we were brought up. That's what Esau wants to see, and that's what you guys have been giving him. If he can keep you, if he can keep you numb, if he can keep you shut from speaking the words that Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai wants you to speak, he'll thrive. He'll continue to succeed in his wicked world. He'll continue to succeed, man. That's why he doesn't want you to see this truth. That's why a lot of preachers. And pastors now are coming out against the Hebrew Israelites. Saying that all men are saved. But like I read in Romans 9, it tells you that the promises and the adoption and the services of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai is for the Israelites. All right? And Jacob is the beginning of it that follow it. So... That's where we're going, man. Israel is trying to rise up, all right? But our people... <coughs> you know what? Let me go to Hosea real quick. Our people don't want to... They don't want to hearken to the word of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. A lot of them are scared. Scared to go out. Scared to do what we're supposed to do. When it comes to this truth, man, you should not be scared of anything. You know, there's a lot of scriptures that are coming to my mind, and I can't get all of them, man. But like it states in Joshua chapter 1, that's a commandment to be strong 
to be faithful in Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai to save you, man. It's a commandment to be strong, strong in this truth, man. All right. This is Hosea, chapter 4, verse 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Like I was saying earlier, we tell our people who they are, but they don't want to listen. They think it's something crazy. It's outrageous. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to listen. And, and it might sound a little crazy, man. It really might. You know? But the only thing that Christianity teaches you is a fairy tale. That's what it teaches you. Saying that everybody will be saved is a fairy tale. That is a fairy tale, because not everybody will be saved. It tells you that Israel will be like the grain of sand. But two thirds will be done away with. So if Israel, the promised people, the world without end, will be done away with, how much more you heathen and Edomites, especially you Edomites, you know? Like it states in uh, Revelations 13 and 10, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. Who led us into captivity? The Caucasian man. What are we in currently? Captivity, right? There is no peace. You know what? <laughs> Let me finish up this one. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. All right, so you so-called preachers, which means to teach, you guys aren't teachers, because all you're teaching is love, love, peace, peace. All right, <laughs> and to expand on that one, let me go to Jeremiah real quick. Jeremiah 6. And six and sixteen, I believe. <clears throat> it's Jeremiah chapter six, verse sixteen. It's lucky. Thus saith Yahweh, stand ye in the ways, and see, and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. All right, so that's how our people are, man. They don't want to walk in the in the ways of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. Law, statutes, and commandments, man, that's too much. Going out to the highways and the hedges, and my friends might see me, my family might see me and make fun of me, man, that's too much. Reading a lot. Learning a lot? Man, that's too much. I didn't even do that in school. All right? But there you are, chasing after the so-called white man, trying to chase after his money, trying to chase after his dreams, trying to chase and make it a reality. If Esau, like, I, like we always say, man, if Esau ever found the way to live forever, if these elite ever found the way to live forever, you think he would give it to you? He wouldn't. He doesn't care about you. Why do you think they're making all the money? The Rothschilds, how much do they have? $500 trillion? That's literally what they have, $500 trillion. They own everything. All right? America's in debt. The whole world's in debt. And here you have these elite, the ones that are causing this debt. And you guys are chasing after a false dream that everybody will be saved. You guys are gonna be in a rude awakening, man. All right? Uh, it's locked. I 
I also, also, I set watchmen over you, saying, hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, we will not hearken. And that's the brothers, the Akim, the body, going out to the four corners of the earth, preaching this gospel, which gospel means good news, to you Israelites, to you Jakes, that there is salvation for you, man. There's salvation for your souls. There's rest for your souls. But you don't want to listen. Like I said, you're too busy running after Esau. You're too busy turning back to Egypt. And really, <laughs> you know, our, most of you Judites do turn back to Egypt, man. Or you Levites or you Benjamites. Because you think that that's where you're from. And you have a lot of people in, like on, on social media trying to wake up supposedly. People saying you're from Africa. These are your ancestors. That's false, man. There's a difference between an Israelite and a Hamite. All right? They don't bear the same witness with the Holy Ghost. All right? Now, most of you, two-thirds of our people do bear the witness of, of, of what the Hamites bear because you reject the Holy Ghost, man. But at least you had a shot. These Hamites don't have a shot. All right? It says, uh, verse 18, Therefore hear ye nations, and know, O congregation, what is among them. Hear, O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this people, even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened unto my words, nor my law, but despised it. All right, so that that just goes to show why our people went through what they did, man. They didn't want to listen to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. All right. Now it says over here in uh, back in Hosea chapter four verse six, continuing on, I will also reject thee, and thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy power. I will also forget thy children. You see. So that's why we went into captivity, man. They didn't want to hear. They didn't want to hearken. They didn't want to be part, part of the people that followed Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Because they would look at the heathen and they were like, man, those people are striving. I want to follow after them. Well, guess what our people are doing now? Looking after these Edomites and these heathens saying, I want to be like them. All right. It says, uh, let me go uh Oh, let me go to Jeremiah 16. And I'm going to start off at verse... Okay, I think it's... <clears throat> This is Jeremiah 16, verse 16. Behold, I will send for many fishers, saith Yahweh. So the Most High is going to send fishers, right? What did Yahweh Shai say? What did he say to the apostles? You know, they were casting their nets. They were actual fishers. And he said, I will make you fishers of men. And they followed after the Lamb. And that's what we're doing. We're following after our shepherd, man. So it says, Behold, I will send for many fishers. And those are the ones that go out to the highways and hedges preaching the truth. Not that fake stuff that you get at the churches. That they talk about love. They talk about peace. Everybody is saved. Not everybody's saved, man. All right? Salvation is of the Jews. And I'm not talking about those Jewish people over there in Israel, because those are Jewish. Ish meaning kind of or sort of. So 
So they kind of were sort of Jews. Not, it's not true. All right, you either are or you're not. So that you're either a Jew or you're not a Jew. All right, because those people over there in Israel are Jewish. They're Jewish. They're not the true Jews. They're not Judites. They don't come from the tribe of Judah. All right? Judah are you so-called Negroes. All right? Those are the ones that came in slave ships to the Americas. Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Let me continue. And they shall fish them, and after will I send for many hunters, and they shall hunt them from every mountain and from every hill and out of the holes of the rocks. For mine eyes are upon all their ways. They are not hid from thy face, neither is their iniquity hid from my eyes. So Yahweh Hashem Yahweh is watching everything you're doing. Either you forsake what the prophet is saying, or you actually go after what Yahweh Hashem Yahweh is saying, man. Alright? Either you hearken to the words of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh or you reject it. Alright? So what does it say again in Hosea chapter 4 verse 6? My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. So those preachers, those preachers out there in these churches, the Most High does not dwell in any temples, man. All right? He doesn't dwell in those temples. He doesn't dwell in any place built by hands. All right? Going back again to the Israelites, he dwells inside of you. The ones that are actually after the truth. The ones that are doing this work. Lord willing, I'm part of that elect. I'm part of that number. You know? But, ultimately, he doesn't rest in those churches. So you guys call yourself preachers, teaching, but you're false teachers, man. You're not, you're not real. You know? Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy power, I will also forget thy children. As they were increased, so they sinned against me, therefore will I change their glory into shame. So a lot of you guys are going to see judgment, alright? Because you're actually going after the ways of the world. Shai said, the world will not hate you if you're part of the world. But he will hate you if you're part of him. If you're following after him. So what does that say about you guys going to grab a nice little bite? Throughout Monday through Friday. You don't care. Saturday you don't care. But Sunday you go to church. And then after Sunday you don't care. And then come Monday you don't care. You know? And then you have a lot of people... They want to call the police because, oh, he's being too loud. And the police come up here and they tell me, what are you doing that's bad? You know, like it says in Job, am I your enemy because I tell you the truth? What were they doing to the Messiah? They were calling things upon him because he was saying the truth. All right. So I'm going to go to Zechariah chapter 2. Verse 1. So, Lockie, let me go to Zechariah chapter 1. Verse uh, 3. Therefore say thou unto them, Thus saith Yahweh of hosts, Be ye not as your fathers, Unto whom the former prophets have cried, saying, Thus saith Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, of hosts, Turn ye now from your evil ways and from your evil doings. But they did not hear, 
nor hearken unto me, saith Yahweh. All right, so the Most High is telling you guys what you're supposed to do. Turn to the Most High. You Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans that were taken into slavery, that were raped, robbed, murdered, stripped from their land. All right? You guys that walk around nowadays, shamed. If you're seen walking around and it looks like you have some type of weapon, guess what? You're going to get shot. But if the so-called Caucasian man is walking around with the same type of stuff, they're going to ask him to put it away. And that's just the truth, man. What happened in California? What happened in Dallas when that man was shot in his own apartment? Was there justice? No, there is no justice, man. Just like Jeremiah states, they say peace, peace, where there is no peace, man. There is no peace in this place. There is no rest. Monday through Saturday, you got to grind. Sunday, you go to church. After church, you go, you're back in it. But those churches out there, they're not telling you the truth. Like I said, all they preach is peace, peace, love, love, and prosperity, and you'll get blessing. But they're just there to take your money. They're not there to tell you the truth. Open rebuke is better than secret love is what the scriptures say. All right, so if I'm out here for my people, the Israelites, the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, and I'm telling you to change your ways, not by my own thoughts, but from what the scriptures are saying, like I just read in Zechariah 1. Change your ways and turn back to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. All right, that's how you do this. That's how you get saved. If not, you're going to be destroyed along with them that will be destroyed, which are the heathen and the Edomites. Because it states in the scriptures, Jacob have I loved, which Jacob's name turned to Israel. Israel had 12 children. Those 12, 12 children are the 12 tribes of Israel, which are you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Jacob have I loved, and Esau have I hated. Who's Esau? Look up the book. Who is Esau Edom? It used to be $12, but now that that knowledge is getting out, they bumped it up to $3,000, $4,000, $5,000 for a book that tells you the truth. The Caucasian man is who Esau is from the Caucasus Mountains where Esau dwelt and reje rejoice over Israel being taken captivity. And then he established different types of kingdoms and they all failed. Like the scriptures state, he will build up and I will knock down. So Esau built up the biggest empire to date. But it's going to be knocked down by Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. And that's coming pretty soon. Alright? So returning back to Isaiah 47. Let me start off at verse 1 again. Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground, there is no throne. O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. Now who is virgin daughter of Babylon? Virgin daughter of the Chaldeans. If you go to Revelations 18 and verse 21. Let me start at verse 20. This is Revelation chapter 18, verse 20. Rejo rejoice over her thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets. For Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai has avenged you on her. So what did great Babylon do to these prophets, to these men, that they should be avenged? Mass slaughter. What's coming up recently? What's coming up next week? Thanksgiving. What happened in Thanksgiving? Does anybody actually know? Or do you guys just worship stupid things and think that it's okay? Think that it's okay in the eyes of the Most High to worship vain things. What happened in Thanksgiving? 
Do you not know? A mass slaughter of Native Americans is what happened in Thanksgiving. And you want to disguise it with a turkey. What does Black Friday mean? What happened in Black Friday? It's when those Native Americans, which were actually dark, and when a lot of you slaves were given in an auction for free or cheap, for money. So what do our people do now in Black Friday? We go buy things for free, that are free, cheap, with our money. And a lot of people want to buck up. They want to say that we're crazy because we go out and we preach and we teach and we tell you the truth. But then you have those preachers in different churches that tell you they have the truth. If they have the truth, they wouldn't tell you to celebrate Christmas. What happens at Christmas? Like I mentioned earlier, who is Christ? Jesus Christ is nothing but a pagan name. His name is not Jesus Christ, all right? It tells you in Acts 26 that he was a Hebrew man and he spoke Hebrew. So his name is Hebrew. His customs were Hebrew. He was an Israelite, all right? So Christmas is really what happened in Rome, which is where Serapis Christus was at, that deity, that pagan god, which was later known as Zeus, Zeus Christos, sounds like Jesus Christ to me, which it is. His name is Yahawashai. That's the name of the son, Hamashiach, which means the Messiah. All right, and in Christmas, you guys wanna worship these things, but if you read Jeremiah 10, it tells you not to. So you know those preachers don't have the truth because they're fake. Going back to Revelations 18, 21, and a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea saying, thus, with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. All right, so this place is gonna be knocked down pretty soon, man. This place will be knocked down by Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. All right, and there's nothing nobody can do about it, man. Whatever he sets in his will, that's exactly what will happen. Thy nakedness. So like in verse 2, take, a, take the millstone and grind meal, uncover thy locks, and bear thy leg, uncover the thigh, pass over the rivers. You see, so you're making, you're, you're being known, man. You're being known. You're being found out to be a whore, that harlot. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered, yeah, thy shame shall be seen. And we see you now. We know you, Esau. You and your rulership, you're wicked. All right? I will take vengeance, and I will not meet thee as a man. See, so Yahweh Hashem Yahweh is coming in an angelic force, man. He's ready. He's ready. All right? And the brothers that are preaching this truth, we're ready. Like I said, Lord willing, we're part of that elect. We're hopeful. All right, but we still have to visualize like if we have the crown, man. Don't let it go. All right. It says, I will take vengeance. I will not meet thee as a man. Because the Abba Hashim is coming as an angelic force, man. All right. As for our Redeemer, Yahweh of hosts is his name. So Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai is the one that can only rescue us, man. The Holy One of Israel. 
Sit thou silent and get into the darkness, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called Lady of Kingdom. And that's what America calls herself, that Lady of Kingdoms. Thinking that you can rule all over the world, thinking you can rule everybody. You know, there's no problem in you being the wicked one that you are. You have no worries, man. I was wroth with my people. You see, and that's what happened to us and to our people, man. We were sent into captivity. I have polluted my inheritance and given them into thine hand. Thou didst show them no mercy. Upon the ancient hast thou very he heavily laid the yoke. All right? So you guys have no type of, um, not fear. Uh, you guys have no type of uh, heart. You guys don't have any soul, man. You guys don't have any, nothing, you know? You guys can't repent of the evil that you did. took us into captivity and I brought this out earlier let me bring it out again Revelations chapter 13 verse 9 if any man have an ear let him hear hear the word of Yahweh Shai. he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword here is the patience and the faith of the saints. So we have patience and faith in Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai that He's going to deliver us from all these evils. All right. Now let me go to Ro Romans thirteen. <clears throat> Romans chapter 13 and verse 11. And that knowing the time that now it is high, that it now that it, so lucky, let me read that again. <clears throat> and that knowing the time that now it is high time to wake out of sleep. You see, so our people are asleep, man. And now is the time to wake up out of your sleep, man. It ain't the time to go back to sleep. You know, like in the mornings when you have to go to work for Esau and you wake up and you're like, man, I'm going to call in today. You can't do that here, man. That's not how it is. <clears throat> for now is our sal salvation nearer than when we believed. All right. So now it's drawing closer and closer and closer. If we were in captivity for 10,000 years, what is 10,000 years to infinity? It ain't nothing, man. It's a smudge. Nothing. All right? Imagine living in your prime for 100 years. Even just 100 years. Imagine living in your prime. Imagine that, man. You know how crazy that is? Imagine living in your prime and never hurting in your legs, on your wrists, your back. You know? Never going bald. Not losing any teeth. Imagine that, man. And we have to visualize the kingdom because if we don't vision... How can we hold like a brother, like the brother, the elder in uh, in GMS Dallas and uh, Dallas had said? How can you hold on to your crown if you don't believe that you have it? How can you hold on to something you don't have? You can't. 
That's why you have to visualize all of this being true and you have to be sincere that you believe you have to really believe that you have that crown to hold on to it, man, and don't let it go. Let me read verse 11 again. And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to wake up out of our sleep, for now our salvation is nearer than we, we, when we believe. So it's drawing nearer and nearer. All right? It says that, the night is far spent, the day is at hand, all right? This darkness, this wickedness in this world is drawing closer to death. And like we read earlier, Esau is the end of the world. So Esau's kingdom is near to death, man. It's close. Like it says, the night is far spent. Esau, you're far spent. The day is at hand. Jacob is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, all right, Esau's ways, and let us put on the armor of light, which is the scriptures. Yahabashim Yahushai. Believing in the Most High. All right. So going back to Isaiah 47, let me go to uh, verse 7. And thou sayest, I should be a lady forever, so that thou didst not lay these things in thy heart. Neither did thou remember the latter end of it. All right, you don't, you don't remember who you took. You don't remember who you put in captivity. You don't remember, right? The Holocaust. You guys want to say remember that? 9/11. You want to say remember that? But that was your own people, man. Your own people killing your own people. But when it comes to slavery in the 1400s of the so-called Latinos, when it comes to slavery in the 1600s of the so-called Negroes, y'all say, forget it. That happened a long time ago. 1963, 67, 1967, y'all were still going at it. The 2000s, y'all were still going at it. 2018 and y'all are still going after Jake trying to destroy Jake trying to keep Jake oppressed it's not on your time man it's on your Abashim Yahushai's time alright therefore hear now this thou that are given to pleasures America is given into pleasures man you Edomites that dwellest carelessly that sayest in thine heart I am and none else beside me I shall not sit as a widow, neither shall I know the loss of children. And that doesn't just go for Babylon the Great, man. That goes for people individual. All right? Y'all shouldn't be living carelessly, man. Really assess the times. All right? Now, like it states in the, in the, in the scriptures, Zalakia, like it states in the scriptures, there's a time for everything, man. All right? But the seriousness of Yahweh Shem Yahushai should be in your mind all the time. All right. Therefore, hear now this: Thou that are dwelt, that are given into pleasures, that dwell carelessly, that sayest in thine heart, I am, and none else beside me. I know the, I shall neither shall know the loss of children, but these two things shall come upon thee in a moment, in one day. The loss of children and widowhood, they shall come upon thee, their perfection for the multitude of thy sorceries and for the great abundance of thine enchantments. All right, so Babylon the Great will be destroyed, and that's here in America, man. It's going to be destroyed by ICBM missiles, thus saith the scriptures in Joel chapter 2, verse 5. The chariots of fire that sound like a bunch of chariots but it's really fire devouring in the stubble all right those are those icbm missiles this place will be destroyed they're already trying to implement the mark of the beast which is the rfid chip the image of the beast would be going after esau's ways the mark of the beast 
would be the uh, RFID chip. And when you guys are tried, when all of us are tried, and the elect are given into the hand of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, and they're taken back up, this place will see destruction. It'll be desolate. And like I read in Revelations 13 and 10, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. All right? So you Edomites, so-called privileged white people, will be going to captivity. For thou hast trusted in thy wickedness, thou hast said, none seeth me. Thy wisdom and thy knowledge, it hath perverted thee, and thou hast said in thine heart, I am and none else is beside me. All right, you think you're up here, America. You think you're up here, and you won't be brought down low. That's what you feel. You feel like you're gonna be like the most high, no one can touch you. But Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is gonna destroy you, man. Therefore shall evil come upon thee, thou shalt not know from whence it riseth. And mischief shall fall upon thee, thou shalt not be able to put it off. And desolation shall come upon thee suddenly, which thou shalt not know. All right? So America is going to be destroyed. And like, I was, like we read, they don't know where it's going to come from. They're going to have no idea how this desolate valley of dry bones, dead people, they're not going to know how, all, how it all happened, man. They're not going to understand it. All right? This is the second book of Peter's. verse 10 but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night alright so a thief in the night do you see that thief coming in the night whenever he robs you no nope. you don't know when that thief is coming man alright so you don't know when that time of destruction coming In the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. And those are those ICBM missiles. The earth also and the works that are therein shall burn up. All right? So the works thereof, so these buildings, everything will be desolate, man. All right? So going back to Isaiah chapter 47, rereading verse 11. Therefore shall evil come upon thee, and thou shalt not know from whence it rises. Then mischief shall fall upon thee, and thou shalt not be able to put it off. The desolation shall come upon thee suddenly, which thou shalt not know. So like we read in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10, that's Yahawashai when he comes back. All right, that's the thief in the night. Verse 12, stand now with thine enchantments and with the multitude of thy sorceries, wherein thou hast labored from thy youth, if so be thou shalt be able to profit, if so be thou mayest prevail, if so be thou the Most High, if so be thou a God, then you will prevail when Yahabashim Yahweh comes back. But you won't, because this place will be utterly destroyed, man. So Yahabashim Yahweh is really mocking you. All right, go ahead. Like your parents, when you were young, and you didn't want to listen, you didn't want to hearken. And you thought you were the man. They would tell you, go ahead. Get out of my house. Go pay some bills. Buy you a house. Buy you a car. Get you a job. You want to act like a man, act like a man. Alright? 
So Yahweh Shah is looking at you, saying, you want to act like a God? All right. When I come back, we'll see if you are. Right? What does the scripture say? Are thou going to say thou art... <laughs> Are you going to say that you're a god when they're killing you? You can't. Behold, there shall be a stubble. The fire shall burn them. They shall not deliver themselves. From the power of the flames, there shall be a coal to warm at, nor fire to sit before it. Like I said, this place is going to be desolate, man. All right? So now going to Hosea. Hashem Yawashai is letting you know that you're going to be as stubble brought down low. Alright. This is Joel chapter 2. It's like it. <clears throat> Joel chapter 2 verse 5. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains Shall they leap like the noise of the flame of fire that devoureth the stubble as strong people set in battle array before their face the people shall be much pain all face shall gather blackness and those are those ICBM missiles that are coming over here 200 million all right 200 million missiles will come for this place and it will destroy this place Back in Isaiah 47, verse 15, so like in 14, behold, they shall be as stubble, the fire shall burn them. All right, those are those ICBM missiles that are headed for this place. And they shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame. There shall not be a coal to warm at, nor a fire to sit before it, because this place will be desolate. Thus shall be unto thee with whom thou hast labored, even thy merchants from thy youth. They shall wander everyone to his quarter. None shall save thee. So this place will be utterly destroyed. Thus saith the scriptures. All right. So with that, Akim, I want to say Shalom. Peace and blessings to you elect men, to you men that are out there fighting for the word of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai and laboring in this truth with all sincerity. All right, peace and blessings to you elect. And as always, giving all praises unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha Kudash. I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching us this truth to rule well. Shalom.